That is it. Boom! Excellent. Crush that! Now what's next, Tim? Hurry up! We say, ah! Royal Wedding is this coming weekend, isn't it? I don't know. Who's getting married? Welcome to Sports Center. Uh, the, debate, the debate has been raging online whether uh, all of Canada should should cheer for the Winnipeg Jets. Oh, has it? H how about we just watch hockey and well, enjoy let's it? just enjoy it. But you should cheer for the Winnipeg Jets. They're a very likable team. They are very likable. Uh, you watched game one on Saturday. Yeah, with uh, my uh, girls because of the 7 p.m. start time. It made it a lot easier. That does make it a lot easier. Up. Well, okay, game two, Monday. You're hoping here the Jets could pull off a uh, two games to none lead at home in front of the sea of white, the whiteout, the Winnipeg whiteout. Thomas Tatar, scratch for seven of 11 playoff games. Remember, they picked him up at the deadline from the wings. But he was in the lineup on Monday, and he opens the scoring and quiets the crowd. That's the first point of the postseason for Thomas Tatar. Hurt in a car, call Thomas Tatar. Here's the scene at the official watch party at the Red Rock Casino in Vegas. Sports Network on the call. Turnover by Kyle Conner. Jonathan Marcheseau, fifth of the postseason. Winnipeg down a pair through one. Braden McNabb breaks his stick. He leaned on it too hard, so he broke it. I don't know why that's a thing, but anyway, we showed it to you. Second period, Vegas turns it over. Andrew Kopp off the post. Third shot off the post for Winnipeg. Flurry loves his posts. He hasn't lost back-to-back -back games in the postseason. McNabb, before the third, breaks another stick. Again, I don't really, I care about him as much about that as the Royal Wedding. Man, tough goal for Marc-Andre Fleury to give up, but got the crowd back into it briefly, because just over a minute later, Marsh is out of the backhand and pass Connor Hellebuck for his second of the game. 15 points in these playoffs. What a poor Winnipeggers. He Paul Maurice has had enough of that camera. Vegas takes game two. We have a series evened up at one apiece. Jets have lost three of their last four at home. Vegas has not lost two in a row this entire postseason. And Jonathan Marcheseau, as you can see, had himself a game. 15 points. Three points back of Igor Larionov and Jude Drouin. For the most points by a player in a franchise's first ever postseason. Marc-Andre Fleury now tied with Jacques Plante for ninth place in the all-time playoff wins list with 71. That leads all active goalies. Henrik Lundqvist is second with 61 wins. And joining us now from Bell MTS Place is TSN senior writer Frank Saravalli. Always thrilled to talk to Frank. Those two quick goals in the first period. Frank, uh, it must have been quite interesting to have been in the building Saturday and then be in the building on Monday. The difference in the decibel level at that point. Such a different scene, guys. Really quiet in here at that point. But uh, you bet against the Vegas Golden Knights at your own peril. And I think we were all kind of wondering whether this would be a short series. And pretty sure we got our answer after game two. Uh, he is the silver-haired millennial Frank Saravalli. Frank, have a terrific time in Vegas. And, uh, and don't feel bad for us uh, not able to, to head down with you. We wish we could join you. I definitely won't. <laughs> <laughs> the NBA countering with game one of their Western final Monday night, Rockets and Warriors. And for the first time ever, with Kevin Durant and Steph Curry in the lineup, G-State went into a game as underdogs. So these are uncharted waters for these Warriors. Rockets, one and a half point favorites. Both teams disposed of their first two opponents in five games. Uh, Chippy right away. James Harden drives inside for two. Green with the shove after the play. Green picks up a technical just 67 seconds into the series. Kevin Durant. Tough shot over P.J. Tucker. Second quarter. K.D. on Chris Paul. Harden trying his luck guarding Durant. It ah, doesn't work either. K.D. had 17 first half points. Back and forth game. Harden. Blows by his defender. Oh! 
Splits the hoop. 24 of his 41 points came in the first half. Third quarter, Steph Curry steals. Pass to Andre Iguodala for the finish. Curry gets by Harden. Layup. G State extending their lead to double digits. Durant in the fourth. He's unguardable all game. Pulls up for a contested three. Yep. KD finished with 37 points. Four minutes to go. Houston down seven. Ball goes off Clay Thompson into the backcourt. Should have been a violation, but was uncalled. Same possession. Thompson left wide open. His sixth three of the game. Clay added 28 as the Warriors steal home court in game one. This is pretty amazing. The Warriors trio, Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, and Steph Curry took 60 hmm. of the Warriors' 80 shots in game one. They all shot at least 50% from the field, the most ever shots taken by a trio in a single game. I don't know if Klay Thompson will be happy with this picture we have. It looks like he's asleep. <laughs> Sleepies. Game two, Cavs and Celts. LeBron, he's going to be angry hmm. because they lost game one and they lost bad. 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, across the TSN network, except you two, two, you don't get to play. <laughs> World Hockey Championship Canada, Latvia, Canada City, fourth in Group B, coming off a 5-1 loss to the Finns. There's Leafs coach Mike Babcock ordering some new Bab socks. Under three minutes in, Matthew Barzell throws it in front. Christers Gudlevskis makes the save. Puck sits behind him, and Anthony Ovillier scores. Gudlevskis made 55 stops in a 2-1 loss to Canada in the quarterfinal of the 2014 Olympics. Yes, I remember that. That's where I remember that guy. Braden Shen promoted to the first line for this one. Feeds Connor McDavid. Connie can't beat Gudlevskis. Not a lot of Gudlevskis fans in the stands. McDavid leads the team 10 points, four more than any of his teammates. Canada only up 1-0 through two early third. Kristens Rubens squeezes one in. Canada's never lost to the Latvians at the World Championship. Latvia had just two shots in the third. It's tied at one. Canada's GM, Marty Brodeur, ah, he's got car rental ad money. Canada up a man, a mad scramble in front of the Latvian net. Gudlevskis comes up with several big stops, jumping on the Jordan Everly rebound. He's played three games in the NHL for Tampa. Canada outshot Latvia 31-15 in regulation. This one needed overtime. How many times has that happened this year? It's David's a trend. Team leading fifth of the tournament clinches a quarterfinal berth for Canada as they avoid the upset. They're back in action against Germany. Tuesday, the Germans won the silver at the Olympics. Don't forget, beating Canada in the semis. But that was a different team, Canada, at the Olympics. Coverage at 10 a.m. Eastern on TSN 1, 3, and 4. The Deutschland dangler, Leon Dreisaitl. That's who they'll have to face. Uh, Jay Troubadours and Windows. That's our sponsor for this walkover clock. I asked producer Tim how he thought the show was going. He responded with silence. Well, so, no news is good news. That's what I always say in this business. Now we've got a series. Yeah. It, uh, man, the Jets had their chance. They outshot Vegas. Uh, we saw a bunch of their chances there. Well, you know, when you take the crowd out of it in Winnipeg, it's so different there. You could just feel it when you're watching the game. It's such a different atmosphere. Um, and then uh, Winnipeg just has to do that in Vegas. In game yes. Three. Yeah, because that's a good crowd. Take too. those Penn and Teller and Carrot Top fans out. Yeah, of all, they got all the free tickets at the Mirage. Seriously. Playing the slots. Carrot Top. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Best, Best deal, deal on, on the strip. The strip. <laughs> uh, as you saw earlier, Connor McDavid showed off his baseball skills. Batting in the overtime winner against Latvia. Uh, this is a trend in the NHL. Players batting in goals, and it's sweeping the hockey world. Uh, you saw Crosby do it a couple of times. You saw Ovechkin do it. Do you want to learn how to bat in the puck like the pros? We have the instructional video for you. Discover the hockey training secrets that have helped NHL stars achieve tipping greatness. Tip world. Hockey skills video. Tipping the puck batting the puck, tipping then batting the puck. 
Tip World teaches you revolutionary new training techniques that have made professional scouts say tipping is a small part of the game. Rex Mayberry Jr. of Southeastern Hockey Quarterly calls it a VHS. Many professional athletes are excited to learn to tip pucks, like Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. And legendary Colorado Avalanche, Claude Lemieux. Uh, you know. Tip World, hockey skills video. Makes a perfect gift if you're not good at gifts. Have your credit card ready. <laughs> All right. Uh, they do take Discover. Yes, yes. I, I got to say, I miss VHS tapes. The picture quality was... You're going to love this. Bark at the Park Day in Detroit. Right? How about Boz? He's left sweeping up the mess. Bottom two, Nico Gudra. Nico Gudra. Uh, the Tigers fan gets the souvenir. That's the older brother. Younger brother's on the left. And uh, oh, he's in tears. You hate to see this. Oh, poor little guy. I'm sure somebody will get All right, in the end, the older brother gives him the ball. You see? Now, oh, see? Tears work every time. Gudrum at the dish in the fourth. Ooh. Oh, Nico. That's gone over the bits, bits sign. Bit, bits. You big bit, bits guy? These guys are. Yick, Gudrum again. Three run shot to right. He doubles his career totals of two home runs and five RBIs in one game. I know a good rum. Sailor Jerry's. It's the Jannies. This game. Rugby night at AT and T in San Francisco. With a floating pitch in McCovey Cove for some five on five. That's pretty cool. That is really fun. Rays, Royals, Matt Duffy, base hit to right. Denny Echeverria on his way from second, runs right through the stop sign. Looks to be out at home plate. Great move, avoids the tag. Safe. Scores the... Oh, was he? I guess he was. Yeah. That could be the highlight of the night. We'll find out later, or this could be. This little leaguer told to run home instead. He's running right to mom. Mom dragging him down the line, only to be <laughs> tagged up before he hits home plate. <laughs> That's pretty good, Mom. She's strong like Dustin Bufflin. <laughs> uh, what do we got here? This guy, help. oh. <laughs> yeah, I want to see this again. Oh, man. man. That's not fun at all. Kid thought it was funny. Early in the first quarter of the Warriors-Rockets game, look at the ref with the fake out on the jump ball. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, just bringing some levity to that situation. Could we uh, got uh, Ariel Hawani, good Canadian, Great into the guy. show. Montreal zone. Uh, the U.S. Supreme Court has overturned a 26-year-old federal law banning sports gambling. The law made betting on basketball, football, baseball, and other sports illegal in most states. Previously, Nevada was the only state where sports betting was legal. A record $4.8 billion was wagered in Nevada sports books last year. Now, of course, with the Supreme Court's decision to make sports betting legal again, it allows us to bring back our very popular segment. Dan O'Toole, savvy gambler. My American friends, you always take the over. This has been Dan O'Toole. Savvy Gambler. Count it up! After this snake wreaked havoc in a double-A game in Texas, we're counting down the top minor league moments in the Sports Center Top 10. Joey Votto and the Reds were on a roll going into Monday's matchup with the Giants. They had won six straight, but Votto was forced to leave the game in the fourth with lower back tightness. You see him moving gingerly out of the box after a base hit in the third. So bad news for the Canadian. 
got a oh, snake. we got a snake on the field. Are you kidding? There is a snake slithering. Is it in the outfield? Yes. It's out at center, center field. field. Are you kidding me? I have never seen a snake on the field. Yeah, I don't think anyone has any clue. Well, now they've got, they're bringing out some buckets in the outfield. They are trying to corral this thing. That's scary. So they've got the bucket over it. Thank God nobody got hit. Thank goodness. Yep, that happened at a San Antonio Missions double-A game. I tell you, it's like the Wild West in the minors. It's like everyone's hopped up on goofballs. And the top ten only goes to prove that. Get ready. After Red Sox prospect Izzy Alcantara is brushed back twice in the same at bat, he just loses it, kicks the catcher in the chest, then charges the mound. If that happened in today's day and age, he, I don't know how many games was he suspended. I don't know. He'd be suspended for life. But you gotta love that move, the side kick. And here comes the pitcher. Anticipating. Nick Zamolari fouls it off, and it bounces back on the back of his helmet. Boom. Not just uh, minor league baseball. This is uh, Henrik Anderson scores a nice backhand goal, celebrates by jumping into the glass, and then the glass gives way. During a mini snowmobile race between innings of a Winnipeg Gold Eyes game, this little guy, oh man, no, no! Oh. He's, he was fine. He was fine. Chicago Cubs prospect, I love this guy, Taylor Davis. He always knows where the camera is. Always. <laughs> Wonder what happened to him. Vancouver Canadians outfielder Rodney McCray. <laughs> Just the sound is amazing. Didn't they do a Rodney McCray bobblehead? <laughs> this one's terrifying. At the Bakersfield Condors game, they brought a live condor out. Looks like a, terra, a living pterodactyl. The bird was bringing the bird out to put him at the And then the condor tried to eat some of the players on the bench. <laughs> Oh, there goes the mm, condor hungry. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so oh, my God. Uh, and Mississippi Braves manager Philip Wellman. Who will play this man in uh, the Philip Wellman story? Unhinged. You know who it'll be? Uh, who played uh, on Breaking Bad? Dean... Uh, Dean, uh, who, who played the... the Coots. <laughs> no. No one knows? Dean Norris. Thank you, Hound Dog Harrison. Yeah, it'll be Dean Norris as no. Philip Wellman in Unhinged. Dean Norris is in uh, Claws right now. Oh, now, G-Bone, our other producer, says Michael Chiklis. He could play him. He'd be great. Perfect. But he's in the Avengers, isn't he? No, he is not. He is not in the Avengers. Doesn't he... Uh... Oh, he plays Mar the Thing, right? Yeah. But they're, they never made a good Fantastic Four movie, and they never will. Okay. You could take that to the bank. Your chair is extremely low. No, it's just the camera angle. Ah. Oh. No, it, it is low. <laughs> yeah, but you and I don't have the hand-eye coordination of these professional athletes. We also blew it. It's our popular segment where we point out the many, many mistakes we made. We only made a couple. Um, you didn't reference an entire board that the producer Tim painstakingly worked on for hours. You didn't mention anything about it. Thank it Hound about, Dog worked on it. Yeah, Hound Dog did. So not even Tim. Teams up at 2-0 in a conference final and won 39 of 41 times. That's significant. Uh, and you also thought Michael Chiklis was in Avengers. And uh, we never mentioned this. The tie? Just. Bad. <laughs> That's but like why? a foot wide. That is a foot wide. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, you can fit, like, two of your ties inside one of mine. <laughs>